All right, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Hopefully, this turns out as good as I think it will. And if it does, we'll make a good video. If it doesn't, you might look stupid. I'm gonna put it out there anyways. Right inside here is a little nut on the back of this squirrel cage. A little nut right here. What I wanna do is release that nut. So I'm hoping this is the tool I need. I'm hoping that it comes out just like it did. And just maybe it's not seized up. And that motor will slip off of that shaft easily because these things can be a real bear to take apart. Number one, I always start with getting rid of all these daggum aggravating pieces of wire and I put them into my 60% because wire with copper inside of it with only one layer like this, one layer, copper inside, that's gonna be, uh, some people call it 55%. So 55, 60, whatever you wanna call it. You always want to save this wire. If you're not gonna be stripping it, now if you're gonna be stripping it, it's a totally different deal. Um, I find it difficult to strip this wire personally. It's just really small. Although a lot of my commenters tell me that they strip any wire. And um, I do have uh, an automatic stripper, as you've probably seen. Um, and I also have a little razor blade that I run down through these sometimes. But damn it, I just have such a hard time. I just clip off them little pieces right there. Throw it right into my 55% and I'm happy. Okay, so we loosened the bolt on the other side. Uh, we're gonna hope that we take these three. Oh, bolt's up right here. There's three of them. Throw them in a bucket. You probably, everybody has probably seen these old squirrel cages. And probably been a lot of you that struggled like I did trying to tear them apart um, and all you get out of it is a little bit of copper which actually adds up but if you have to take 30 minutes to take one of these things apart it doesn't add up okay so that little bit of copper in there for 30 minutes is probably I'm gonna make about three bucks if if there's a pound uh, and a half of number two because it's always going to be number two because it's wrapped up inside of a motor with all kinds of string on it and everything like that. So I still get my number two money for it. But number two money is only about $3 a pound right now. So, as you've seen, I took the nut off the other side. I always cross my fingers at this point. After I've taken that um, other nut off the other side, sprayed it with my little handy dandy WD-40 because them things can be locked on there sometimes like you wouldn't believe. This is what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping I'm gonna grab that thing and that whole thing is gonna slide out of the inside of that thing and that um, thing that has the aluminum on it and uh, that sits inside of the motor, I don't care about that so much unless it's easy to get out. And actually if it is, I'll take it out and uh, throw it into my heavy steel or, or something like that, to be honest with you. But this is a big trick right here. Is this thing gonna pop up out of there? Fingers crossed, we're hoping so. Oh, okay, the shaft came off. That's a good thing. Shaft comes off, you disregard that piece right there. Take these two screws out, which we're gonna do right now. Believe, I believe, I believe. These are quarter drivers, ain't they? Quarter driver. Let's switch up the idea. Quarter. There we go. Quarter. One side has a little nut on it. Nine times out of ten, uh, you're gonna have to put a little uh, something on that nut. 
while you're taking this off, this side off because they'll just spin if you don't. Whip, Whip it right off. Hang out, drop it in the bucket. This is, this, is, uh, this is always the way that you hope um, everything will work out, basically. Put your little pliers on the nut. I'm not trying to show you how fast I am. I'm just trying to explain, and show you how easy these things are to take apart and get your copper recovery out of them. I'm not saying, yeah, watch stuff on Grandpa. This is, this is the fastest. I just feel like this is one of the most efficient or even just easy. E A S Y. Easy, everybody. Look at that. That's what I call easy. That's what I call easy. Or you can just say easy. Easy, baby. One more. Oh, piece of metal around that thing. From that wire that you put to it. When you're sitting inside of my new building, I don't know, lost enough. when you're sitting inside of my new building, everybody, if you're listening on the camera, you probably hear my building going through its growing pains that it does every day, which is kind of funny to listen to. Anyway, so all right, so there we go. What do we got? We got a motor, we got the bolts taken out of it. Now what do we want to do? We would love for this thing to slide right out of there. And then for me to be able to knock off that piece there and knock off this piece here. So let's see if that's going to happen. Sometimes, to be honest with you, I drive them, just put it on my bench up there and I drive that thing straight down and it breaks here and pops out the bottom. Sometimes I smash it at the top. Sometimes I just see if I can get behind that lip and pop it off like that. That there, you could either put it on your bench or your... Let me see if I can get, all right. This piece here is steel. This piece here is gonna be cast aluminum. Um, sometimes you can beat that thing out of there, but for the most part, you're gonna to spend too much time worrying about it. So you're gonna set that aside and put that in your um, ironing aluminum. And you're still gonna make maybe 14 cents a pound as opposed to throwing it into your um, truck at uh, five cents a pound for shred. So you're gonna make more money. Put them in a barrel, let them stack up. What we really want is that motor out of that thing. And if we can get this side to pop off as easy as we got that side, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Let's see. Oh, look at you. Look at this. There you go. There you go, guys. There you got it. A piece of plastic. That will pop right off of there, generally. Sitting there a couple times on one side and a couple times on the other. And when it does, of course it works out a whole lot better on the vice, but there we go. I can tell what was wrong with that thing. Boy, the oil was just nasty. A lot of sawdust in it. That fan, that fan's been there a time or two. Then again, still have that steel piece. If you want to spend your time and try to drive that thing out of there, that's fine. If you want to take a hammer and just smash this thing, make sure you wear goggles because aluminum, when it breaks, let me tell you something, it goes everywhere. So again, I'm going to take both of these pieces, throw them right into my um, irony aluminum, and they'll buy that for, I know it's, it's all according to what time it is, uh, what, well, how much they're paying, but irony for me, I think is right around uh, 14 cents, maybe a little bit more, 20, maybe even up to 20. This thing here has a big steel shaft in it, all right, big steel shaft. And then this is all heavy steel. This is heavy steel. You have some aluminum here and you have some aluminum here. You could go as far as to cut that off if you wanted to and get the piece of aluminum out of it. But I'm gonna tell you, I've tried it. It's not worth it. Don't do it. Um, save your time for something else. So this is gonna go into my heavy steel. I just throw it in there and they, they've taken it uh, twice now with probably 20, 20 of these, which I got from other motors. 
but I didn't do it this way because I didn't know how to do it this way. That's why I'm teaching you how to do it this way. Next thing I'm going to want to do is some of them come with another piece uh, of uh, steel around it and you want to pull that bolt out. We're going to do that together too. We might as well do it all. Got my screwdriver. All I can do is hope that that bolt will stay while I turn this thing. And it is. Man, I've been so blessed today. Number one, for this thing to turn out so easy for me. Because trust me, you, you will have a bear with these things. They take some serious abuse. Anytime you find one of these squirrel cages in something, there's probably been water in it or who knows what in the world. Okay, so take that outside cage off. There you go, look at that. Could have done that first if you want to. Either, either way you want to, you can throw that into your shred steel because it's not a quarter inch thick anywhere. And that's why I say I'm going to put this in my heavy steel and I haven't really said anything about it, and I think it is 99% heavy steel. Um, I don't know. You guys tell me. What are we left with? That right there. We're left with this. What you always hope is that that is copper. If it's not copper, you might as well throw it in your with your motors because uh, it's not going to be worth um, cutting these ends off and cutting this thing apart and all the other stuff that you have to do to finish thing up. So first thing I do, a file. And I get on the inside of this thing and I just take a piece and I scratch it. And I always cross my fingers first to so do that now. Cross your fingers, I'll give you a second. Please, toes if you want to. Scratch it. Oh, what do we got? Oh, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. So now at this point, I'm not going to go any further with this. I'm not going to take the outside shell off. I'm going to sell that as a uh, as motor weight. Boom, motor weight. I'm not sure what they'll give me. Hopefully, they give me good money. But I did scratch it. And um, enough of you guys did not cross your fingers. I'm sure of it. Because, gosh, let's see here, gosh, I'm so disappointed, I am so, so disappointed, I'm starting to see like something that looks like it is, but then looks like it's not, so what I found is shiny, shiny, right there, shiny white. Not shining orange like I was looking for. You know, isn't that something? Some more there. Hope, hope this shows up right, right through here. I scratched it some more and you can see it's it's white, not orange. So yeah, I'm a little disappointed. Can't even believe it. I mean, it's not even half and half. So no matter what. Motor weight, yeah, but, but that is uh, how you scrap down a squirrel cage. If I was gonna take this a step further, and I might in another video because I didn't get to do this one. I'm gonna cut that right there, throw this piece in my vise, cut these ends off, pull the cop, pull the copper out, and I will have completely, um, uh, I will have completely taken all the steps necessary to scrap one of these things. And I'm just hoping that I can find one in my pile over there of about 15 that I find at least half of them have copper. So how about again, keep your fingers crossed while I'm going through this pole, this pile out there, I get some half, half of them's copper or even more. Motor weight. All right, so I thought I was gonna end that video there, but guess what, we're not. Because the very next one that I pulled apart had exactly what we're talking about, copper inside. I scratched it. Whatever, whatever you have available. And yes, I've seen that beautiful orange stuff inside. Now, I will say that out of all the motors that I've taken apart like this, the, this is one of the ones that have the least copper in them. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. There's literally six pieces of copper in there, but it's copper. And uh, sometimes it can be worth scrapping. Other times you might want to just say, put it in your motor weight. 
I'm not sure what your motor weight goes for, but I think mine is pretty cheap. Uh, so I'm not going to do that with this. I might do that with the other ones and see how they, what they say about them. But this one here, we're going to take apart just like I was going to do that one. The only difference is when I took the other flange off, these went with it and all I was left was this. But still we have the same thing. I'm going to cut right in between these two pieces right here with my grinder. And this thing's going to pop off of there. I'll set it up on my vise, cut my ends off, pull the other ends through. Or maybe we'll just try it this way. And we'll cut that this side and just pull them through the other side. So stick with me. Let's get this thing done. I personally find that sticking it up here in your vise is the best way to do it. You can do this without a vise. It just moves around a little bit. But if you have a vise, by all means, stick it in your vise and get the grinding. Now the dirty work is done, you're going to end up with this. You're going to end up with some shred. Throw that right with a squirrel case, and then you're going to end up with this piece here. Right. So now, what are you going to do? Well, number one, in order to pull that out of there, one side or the other has to be cut. It has these steel knobby things that are... Seem to be made of plastic or something. Yeah, seem to be made of plastic that might get in my way when I take my bolt cutters, because that's what I'm gonna use on this one. Take my bolt cutters, slide them down through there, and then again, they might not. So let's see if they might not. I'm gonna take this thing and put it in my vise. Better yet, I might just start out with here. Let's see if we can cut these bad boys. Mm -hmm. That's how I start it. Bolt cutters are much more better than pliers, and then you can get in there with a screwdriver. Mm -hmm. And that nice, beautiful orange. Number two copper is gonna be beautiful sitting in your bucket and out of that motor. And I found that these particular ones are not really that difficult, as long as you get all them strands cut. And I'm telling you, that's gonna be uh, your best bet as far as that goes. And then, if your vice will open up enough, if your vice will open up enough, and hopefully mine does, I'm gonna drop this in there. Get a hold of it again. Get a hold of it again. I'll try this way. If it doesn't work this way, we'll by all means go the other way. But then I have a, a nice metal bar right here that I would love to be able to get in there, but it won't. So I'll take my handy dandy screwdriver and see if that'll work. And I just try to get up underneath that thing. And if you can't, obviously, you can take your Omar. It's actually better if you um, straighten the wires on the other side out uh, um, before you actually do this part. Because even though you cut them, they're still causing resistance because they're all turned in. So, even in this case, oh yeah, I can even see some that are still together. So in that case, I would take my chisel, run it the rest of the way through it. Since I don't, I'm gonna use my hamp, my hammer. Cut proper because if they're not, they're not going to come out.
or you'll spend quite a considerable time pulling them out. You don't want to do that either. No. No. Like I said, this is unusual that you can have a motor like this one I'm dealing with here. I like the ones that have a little bit more copper in them. But that does have to be cut or you're just not going to pull it out. Period. If you have to, because them... Um, one other thing about a set of them bolt cutters is, and you probably know it with yourself, it doesn't necessarily cut completely through because it's just breaking. It's just got sheer force breaking everything. So anyway, if you can lift them up just a little bit, make sure that they're all cut, it will be easier pulling it out the other side. A lot easier, actually. The most important part is them being cut, though. If they're not cut, you can forget about it. Doesn't take that much to, um, really to loosen them up a little bit and get them the rest of the way cut. There we go. I know that's cut. I'm going to flip that thing over. We get on these things. Let's see how we're doing. Might even put it in on a, on a different plane like this. Let me turn it around so you can see what I'm doing. The next thing I need to get everybody is a bigger vise bigger vice. Mine is definitely not big enough. Yeah, so and the longer your piece is, the easier these little things will come out because you can have something to torque with, like longer. So you can get across the other side and pull it, literally pull it through like that. Pretty stuff right there. But my tip on that thing right now is not uh, very sharp. So we'll use my screwdriver in there and then once I get this thing where I want it with a sharper end, look at that goodness. Might be some strands left in there because uh, you didn't quite cut them. You can pull them out. Throw them in your bucket over there. That'll be a lot easier to deal with later. A little bit easier to deal with later. I'm trying to get under all of it. There's little things in here that make it tight or loose. That's nice. Number two. It's always going to be number two, everybody. The only thing about it is number two. Open your jaws. I need a bigger one. Bad. Real bad. This thing is so small. What I need is one of them four things you put on your floor like Jimbo Scrapper has. Wrap a chain around that thing. And man, that thing is a beast. Like I say, the longer your piece is, you can go to the other side and pry with that, which makes it a little bit easier to get that goodness out of there. And these little things right here, they hold. They hold stuff in there pretty good. You probably clip them off. Because they might, they might not like bringing in stuff like that. But yeah, literally, you just get underneath the piece. I'm going to sharpen this and put a nice little sharp edge on it. Just one big enough I can poke myself with. Uh -oh. Love it. My number two is really coming around. I've, I've been doing this thing with big country uh, scrapper where we're trying to save our copper for as long as we can. I don't know if I'll make the year, but I'm going to see, see how I do. Every once in a while you have a couple strands, you just push them on back through. As long as they're cut, they will come right out. 
come right out. And then I'll show you um, what I do with this. This, my friend, again, like I say every time, this, this goes just like a rotor, a rotor on your car. I put these in my heavy steel all day. Rotors, bed frames, angle iron, anything quarter inch thick or they're about, um, they like it to be obviously cut down and processed four foot long so they don't have to cut it themselves. So this is heavy steel. Right now it's 10 cents a pound. I've seen it as high as 17 and 18 actually. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. And that's gonna be my chores for today. I'm gonna, uh, I have, like I said, 10 or 15 of these things. I'm just gonna go ahead and see if I can't just get them broke down. And if I do it off camera, obviously it'll be a lot faster. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Like I always say, and I said earlier, love what you do. And do what you love. Try to find the beauty in every single day. And till next time, check out my copper hoard I'm getting ready to show you. It's not big, it's not great, but I got one. Check it out. I'm starting to look pretty good here on my beautiful number two copper. Anything with a um, joint on it like that is gonna be number two all day. Anything smaller than a pencil will be number two. That is definitely smaller than a pencil, even though there's a bunch of strands to it and it's bigger than a pencil together. It's not bigger than a pencil, so it's always gonna be number two. All right, guys, appreciate you stopping around. This is my pile of bear bright, and I'm sure I can probably push that down just a little bit. I'm trying to save my bear bright. I'm trying to save my number two. And I still got a fairly small bucket of uh, number one. So, yep, number one. No solder joint, no paint, no tape. Nice, clean, patinaed copper. That's it, guys. Till next time, appreciate you. Slam that likes up button. And if you want to see more of Scrapping Grandpa, feel free to join the crowd. And have a blessed day.